Hey people, it's 2017. Happy New Year to you and swig of water for another year of the Unleashed Podcast. Water because I know y'all are trying to start the new year living a healthier life. And I'm here to help you achieve that New Year's resolution, along with a little help from naturebox.com slash Austin. Naturebox is going to help you get your snacking back on track in the new year. I know you've been surrounded by junk food. So have I. Cookies, candy, other sweets during the holidays, but now you can snack better with Nature Box. Nature Box makes snacks that actually taste great and are better for you. They're made with high quality ingredients that don't have any artificial flavors or sweeteners or colors. They're made with high quality ingredients that don't have any artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. And they got something for everyone. They got snacks like sweet and spicy buffalo popcorn, Irish stout peanuts, and chocolate hazelnut granola. And Nature Box recently improved their service. Now you can order as much as you want, as often as you want, with no minimum purchase required. And you can cancel any time. So go to naturebox.com and check out their snack catalog. There are over 100 snacks to choose from, and they're always adding new snacks, too. Just choose the ones you like, and they'll deliver them right to your door. And if you ever try a snack that you don't like, Nature Box will replace it for free. And right now, you'll save even more. Nature Box is offering 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash Austin. That's naturebox.com slash Austin for 50% off your first order. Naturebox.com slash Austin. Y'all know how much I appreciate you listening to this podcast twice a week, and that's why we've created a new automated email system to make sure you never miss a single episode. Just go to podcastone.com slash Steve Austin and sign up. We'll let you know exactly when a new show is out and who the guest is. So sign up now at podcastone.com slash Steve Austin. That's podcastone.com slash Steve Austin. The following program is a podcastone.com production. He started in a small town in Texas. Worked his ass off to become one of the most famous wrestlers of all time. We're going to take care of business tonight, and that's the bottom line. And now he's dominating the world of on-demand audio. And he's doing it for the working man. This is a damn good outlet for me to spew the bullshit off my brain. This is the Steve Austin Show. Unleashed. 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 All right, everybody, welcome to Steve Austin Show. I'm coming to you from the Broken Skull Ranch way out here in South Texas. I'm about to hand my wife the microphone. Good morning, Kristen. How are you? <laughs> you always ask me that. It's just so strange. Yeah, I know, but I've been on the road this morning. I got up early this morning. I got in my wife's SUV. I wanted to take my pickup truck, but she made me drive the SUV, and I hauled ass to Beeville, Texas. Beeville is an hour and nine minutes away, hauling ass, and running you, radar, sometimes hitting triple digits. And you made it in 45. Yeah, I hauled <laughs> ass. I met my nephew, Neil, who went down to uh, Country Slaughter, our butcher shop that we use over in Victoria, Texas, to put our deer sausages together. And uh, I wanted to take my pickup truck, and Neil brought his pickup truck, and that thing was loaded to the gills with coolers <laughs> and just deer meat, bags of uh, sausage and hamburger meat loaded to the gills. And I looked in the back of that SUV, and I'm thinking, God damn, we going to be able to get all this shit in there? <laughs> so we stopped at the Sonic, and I got a jalapeno burger with cheese, and he got some kind of bogus sandwich, and we had lunch together, me and O'Neal, and we just shot the breeze for a little bit. He got the new wheels put on his pickup truck. Oh. He's styling and profiling, and it looks good. <laughs> and so then we started throwing all that shit inside the uh, uh, BMW X5 that I was driving. And the other day, when Shannon Tracy came out from uh, UV country over in Alvin, Texas, to bring out Buck the Mule, I said, hey, man, I know you all sell those Yeti coolers. Bring me one, and I'll just pay you for it. So she brought me one of those 105-quart coolers. God damn it, Kristen. That son of a bitch is heavier than fuck. Yeah, it is. We need a, a dolly for it. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to come on a dolly. Um, I'll tell you what, those things, I think that thing's good for, like, if you've got a base camp or something like that, those walls are so thick, they're, 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 their performance is legendary. But moving those fuckers around, you think it's loaded up. Why don't you it, put some wheels on it? I might take right. it down and just get some wheels put on it. I might put a motor on the son bitch. <laughs> Why don't you put Neely's old uh, tires on there? <laughs> yeah. God damn, I said, son bitch. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, when we get on that airplane, we got all our luggage, but then we're going to take back 
one of the coolers full of deer sausages, and that thing's going to weigh about an extra 100 pounds, so we've got to tell the pilots oh, yeah. to put that on our weight thing. We don't run out of fuel. <laughs> I was just in there. I was just saying uh, before I redid the open, I was like, 2016 wasn't that great of a year for us. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't that – it wasn't – it started off challenging. Let's just, it was a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah not to go into personal detail. Not, not, not even personal with me and my wife. Uh, just, just so, you know, some relatives and stuff like that had some hard times. Uh, but everything. Shona. Came, yeah, Shona passed away, and we had to. Well, we had to put her down. That was a real. Well, that crushed us really. Yeah. And so anyway, we kind of got through 2016 and 2017 fired up, and Kristen made a big batch of black eyed peas. Kristen, what is the tradition, or what is the old lore, or how did eating black-eyed peas on New Year's Day come about to, to like, give you good luck for the year? Is that a wives' my, tale, or what is it? I think each culture has their own way of celebrating New Year's and, and wishing yourself good luck. Like, I think in the certain cultures, they eat noodles for good luck. Um, I don't know. I don't know anything about the black-eyed peas. I just make them every year. <laughs> But how long have you been doing that? Because my my family, the Williams family, has been doing that shit ever since I know my mom. So we've been doing it for 52 years. Well, you and me split off, and I've been out on my own. But was, was your family doing it? My mom does it, yeah, because she's from Arkansas. Yep, from, from the south. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so we've both been doing it. So I ate a shit pile of them the other day, so I'm hoping we'll get real lucky in 2017. <laughs> I get all these emails. People want to send me $7 million or $13 million. And they're always from Farina Bursa or Burka from all these foreign countries for me to take into their trust because they're in harm's way. Right. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's a scam. They're fishing. <laughs> I always keep thinking, you know, when the lottery or the lotto, whatever you call it, gets to be like... 200 million 400 million every now and then like once a year i go buy a lotto card and i figure you know what it's so random i gotta automatically win this maybe it's the lord's will that i win this <laughs> <laughs> and of course you know i never win god damn not. if i won 400 million dollars you always hear about those people that do that and they just blow through their money and they end up worse coming out of it after winning 400 million dollars i don't know how anybody could spend that kind of money no shit. <laughs> I mean, and if you did, just take a chill pill and just relax. Right. You know, take care of a couple of relatives and just chill. You know what? i tell you what. I'm not going to lie to you. If I won $400 million, it'd really kill my work ethic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd still do my podcast, you know, fuck around and entertain people because that's, that's what I'm here for, just for entertainment. And I love doing my podcast. But goddamn, I mean, I'd be going hunting. I would spend it all on a bunch of cars and shit like that. I would get you a 1965 Ford Mustang Fastback because you. that's your dream car. Yes, it is. What color? Midnight blue. Midnight blue, automatic or? Automatic. Okay. Air conditioning. Air conditioning. Okay. <laughs> my Just favorite like the is, one I had. <laughs> my favorite uh, Ford would be the 67 or 68, the old bullet car, Steve McQueen drove. Oh, yeah. And because the pony cars were just a little bit smaller. Yeah. But nonetheless, let's talk about cars. Hey, let's talk about our trip. We're leaving on Saturday. Uh, we got a bunch of people coming in. They're going to do some bird hunting over here. I think that's exciting. Uh, no bird hunting until I get the fuck out of here. But uh, well, are, you looking, forward, people, are you looking forward to getting back to L.A.? Yes, I am. You know what? I am, too. And that's hard for me to say because I love it out here. But we've just been out here for so long, and it's because, man, we're redlining the whole time. Well, we, we have the two extremes. We have Los Angeles where it's hustle and bustle, and you come out here, and it's the complete opposite of that. So it's like we need something in the middle. Well, but the thing is, you got the hustle and bustle of L.A., all the traffic, the bullshit, the sirens, the ambulances, uh, just the helicopters flying overhead, the stuff that I hate. It's just so much noise. It is a lot of noise. And then you come out here, it's just peaceful, quiet. But what I mean down here is because we're always out here trying to play catch up. Yeah. And we never can. Right now, we just got caught up. And now but, we're packing up and cleaning yeah, up. Yeah, and now that we caught up, it's time to go. Yeah. And we took our last deer, so all the deer are processed. And now still got some work to do, but, you know, it, this is just kind of tidy up work. And so now we just kind of clean up, strip everything down, clean up all the equipment, power wash everything, leave this place spick and span. So for the next time we come. So the rats have something clean to play in. Yeah. <laughs> so the rats got a, a clean playpen. But it's a different kind of hustle and bustle. It's a hustle and bustle doing ranch work in the right. middle of nowhere. Right. But I'll tell you what. 
I just miss being able to go a half mile to the groceries. I, I do, you know, fuck, I haven't converted to being a whole city slicker. I've been in Los Angeles for 12 years. But it is nice, like, when we go eat sushi, because we like to eat sushi yeah. once a week. Yeah. Out here, you don't eat no fucking sushi unless no. you want to go catch a catfish and eat him raw <laughs> out of the goddamn pond. I was about as close you're going to get the sushi. Well, maybe I need to learn to make sushi out here with catfish. Well, you're gonna, I don't think I'll be eating it. But I tell you what, it's been nice, you know, some of the deer that we've taken before we took them to the prime processing plant you know when you when you're cleaning that deer you can reach in there and get those tenderloins out and man i've been cutting those things up and tenderizing them and putting them in eggs and milk and flour and frying them up as a matter of fact that's what i'm making for dinner tonight uh that has been outstanding i've been eating all kinds of deer meat which i don't normally get to do in los angeles right. frying it but with all this sausage coming back with us on the airplane i'll be able to you know barbecue a link of sausage yeah eat eat you know all this stuff that we've raised out here. So I'm looking forward to that, but I don't know. I need to get my ass back in the gym. Yes. I need to slow down on the drinking. We do. How do you feel like you've done with your fitness? Horribly. God <laughs> damn it. There's something about South Texas. No, it's not really South Texas. I think I talked about this uh, on the podcast with Teddy. There's something about being out here in the country. You know, once you get your day's work done, you, man, you're you too wanna, dang tired to exercise. No, you're too tired to exercise, but you just want to wash down the trail dust with a glass of whiskey or beer or so. Or you like to drink sake. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I like to do the same thing in Los, <laughs> Los Angeles as well. But there's just something out here that yeah. because you're so busy working, working out, plays second fiddle to getting the work done. But it's also part of our routine in California where we have the gym is accessible. My Zumba is accessible. And we have our gym here, but... It's just not the same. Well, it's got out there in the <laughs> pavilion and just got those barn doors. And so if it's cold outside, it's cold in the gym. If it's hot outside, it's hotter than a motherfucker in the gym. Yeah. You just don't feel like working out. No. I've done, a piss, I've done a piss poor job this year of working out. And we started off like we were going to. We took a couple weeks off, and then we got into our routine, and we started exercising, and then everything went south. I'm going to talk to Teddy uh, Fowler on the podcast, and I'll go ahead and give you a spoiler. He said he didn't really have any New Year's resolutions. Uh, you got any New Year's resolutions, my wonderful wife? No, not really. Not in that shit? <laughs> no. My, Every day is a New Year's resolution. My, my New Year's resolution for 2017, as we used to always say in the wrestling business, about when you go into a wrestling match, I'm going to get my shit in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to own 2017. Now, I don't know exactly what I mean by saying that, but I'm going to have a goddamn good year. You go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fucking raise hell in 2017. <laughs> I don't know in what fashion, shape, or form, but I just got my mindset on making 2017 a damn good year because 2016 was a little bit lackluster. So just stay out of the goddamn way. I'm going to stop and get a Diablo sandwich and a Dr. Pepper because I'm in a goddamn hoy. <laughs> hey, Kristen, it was good bullshitting with you here on the open of the show. I'm going to take your microphone. I'm going to cruise back in here into the bedroom where I do my reads and my podcast, and I'm going to take care of the first order of business. My podcast today is a conversation with Ted Fowler 361. We're just shooting a breeze, talking about wrapping up all the projects up here. All the cleaning that we're doing, it's God, this is a fucking reality show waiting for someone to fucking say, hey, Steve, let's do a reality show at the Broken Skull Ranch where I bring motherfuckers out here and mold them into fucking men. Eh, enough of that bullshit. Hey, man, uh, before we get into the body of this podcast, we've got a Q&A today on the backside of the podcast on part two. First is me and Teddy shooting the breeze. But before we get into that, here's something. Let me ask you. Have you ordered your WWE Slam Crate at LootCrate.com slash Unleashed? Well, what are you waiting for? This is the greatest tag team in crate history, the WWE Slam Crate. It's a bi-monthly mystery subscription service for fans of the WWE Universe. And the third crate is ready to order now. This one is all about the road to WrestleMania, and it celebrates the superstars who live, eat, breathe, and sleep this journey. And this crate is loaded with exclusive items featuring The Rock, Seth Rollins, Charlotte, and other WWE superstars. There's also an authentic t-shirt that you can't get anywhere else. So sign up at LootCrate.com slash Unleashed by January 15th at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 
or you'll miss it and regret it. So go to LootCrate.com slash Unleashed and use the promo code Unleashed. You can save $3 off any new subscription. That's L-O-O-T Crate.com slash Unleashed and use the promo code Unleashed to save 3 bucks off any new subscription. But do it now because once that February 15th deadline passes, so does your chance to get this crate. Order now at LootCrate.com slash Unleashed. Okay, it's a brand new year, and Podcast One's got a whole bunch of brand new coming your way. We're talking about new shows from Layla Ali, The Forbes Network, NASCAR's Larry McReynolds, Real Housewife Kim Zolchak, amazing scripted series like Murder Made Me Famous, Tori Spelling and Dean McDermott, Richard Marks, Norman Lear, and many, many more. So get on board for 2017 and download the Podcast One app now. That way you can take us with you all year long. <laughs> Happy New Year from PodcastOne.com. Steve Austin, Unleashed. Unleashed. What's happening, Ted? How are you? I'm doing good. Good except, energy. <laughs> except for the fact I'm bit up with fucking chiggers and ticks and fleas. How'd you get the chiggers, ticks, and fleas on you? I'm moving all those deer when the cooler crapped out and taking them over to the other deer. Or to the other cooler. I did it in a short sleeve shirt. It was my first mistake. Well, what was I doing when you informed me that the deer cooler had gone down? Uh. I know it was something you important. Were, I don't know. You're in the house. Because I was going out to hunt, and I walked out, and I noticed that, you know, the cooler wasn't on when I opened the door. It's 60 in there. It's the second time my cooler broke down this year. They were supposed to have fixed it. Yes, I'm sir. I'm certainly um, positive that it wasn't their fault. I think a rat got up there and chewed up some wires. <laughs> so we had about, what, 10, 11 deer hanging? Yes, sir. 11. We've got a backup cooler on the other side of the property, and we've been running that thing all season long just because it hadn't been running in a couple of years because we never use it. So when a guy came out there and fixed it, the guy from South Texas or South Central Air Conditioning in Jordan, and they do excellent work, he said, hey, man, you might want to run this thing for a while. Just make sure it's good. And so we did, and luckily we had that to go as a backup. But while Teddy was throwing all those damn deer in the back of my 6x12 utility trailer, I was doing something. So as you picked them all up, oh, Jesus Christ. He's pointing at his forearm and his bicep where he has a chigger bite. You fucking pussy. God damn. I, I came over here to do this podcast. I got about six four-by-four four pieces of paper that my wife wrote notes on. I got some emails that people sent over. And I got uh, my drinking glass full of rocks and a half gallon of Crown Royal Black. I borrowed a drink of water, just a splash of a cunt hair of water on top of my whiskey. God damn it, Teddy. You know who was doing that podcast just the other day mm -hmm. for the Tuesday show? Right. Right then, towards the end, I reached across the table. I spilled my 20 ounce Yeti tumbler. <laughs> there wasn't nothing but a cunt hair's worth of material left in there, and a couple of little splashes got on my computer, my number one laptop. And I've had this thing for about a year. And the motherfucker crapped out. Really? So I brought this little uh, Air Mac. I said, man, I better just bring this thing back up just because who knows what's going right. to happen, especially with me and technology. And I wasn't drunk. I wasn't shit-faced. It wasn't nothing. I just knocked over glass, and a couple of drops got on my computer, and that son of a bitch's belly up. Really? That was oh. enough to do it? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, man, I go in panic mode. I'm thinking, man, I don't have FileZilla or whatever on this computer, but look, luckily... Thanks to Dan Brady, my good buddy in L.A., my tech guy, before I left, he, we, we updated all my applications, my FileZilla, Skype, all that stuff, and then we got on this computer. And I do this thing where you can just share your computer with someone, they can look on mm -hmm. your screen mm -hmm. while you're mm -hmm. talking to them. So he just guided me through the process. Luckily, I brought my little card reader that plugs into the side of the USB port, plugged in my little chip that you and I have been talking in, and sent the show. So, God damn, thank God I brought this fucking bag up. Boy, I can't believe that that thing got screwed up with just that little bit, you know, of margarita that, that flopped on it. I don't think it was the tequila that got it. I think it was the sugar and the <laughs> margarita mix. <laughs> I mean, straight up. Because, I mean, I, you know, fuck, I drank most of the damn drink. My wife made me a bunch of notes to help out with the show. I see that. She says, are you going to do a podcast tonight? Because I need to turn in a podcast tomorrow because it's podcast time. But also got a shitload of work. Shit, me and Teddy ain't even hunting right now. He went out with the camera. 
and he was filling deer feeders yard all day, and then I was riding a tractor trying to cut out the Sunderos, get some more mowing before we get out of here, and I got to drive into Beeville, Texas tomorrow to meet my nephew, Neil, who is bringing me the deer meat that we just had processed from Country Slaughter down there in Victoria, Texas. I didn't want to drive all the way to Victoria because I ain't got time. Well, I've got a few more days here because I fly out on January 7th. Ted's got a couple more days here, but with all the shit that we got going on, wrapping up all these projects, taking the corn feeders out of the damn field, putting the protein feeders out, you got about four more to fill. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there's a couple more cuts that I need to make, and I need to put those uh, protein feeders out where I want them. But goddamn, man, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Saw a good deer tonight. You saw a hell of a fight. Yeah, yeah, I videoed it. God hell of a damn, fight. well, they wasn't messing around. No, no. And young deer, too. You know, they, they did that John, John Wayne walk and, you know, kind of, you know, tilt their heads. And, man, you know, it's on because they're all test, you know, testosterone up. The majority of the does have all been closed out. You know, they're bred. So, you know, they're, they're laying in the brush doing, you know, whatever they're doing. And the guys are walking around, you know, looking for some trim. And, you know, boy, they, they start that old bar stare down, and they, they hooked it up. It's funny because there's two bucks fighting on this film. Yeah, they're a couple of young bucks, two and a half years old, but it was a good fight. Man, one of them started, they, they locked up. I mean, one of them got the other one's head turned. He's pushing him back. And then the other one got his hoof hung up in the hole, uh, t- just a tangle of horns. Then he got it out. Then the other one turned the other guy's head. Looked like he's going to snap his neck. Then they came out of that. And then out of the blue, it's always like you hear people say, hey, man, let's go see if we can rattle up a few bucks. Yeah. And for you people that don't hunt, a lot of times you'll get two uh, shed horns or just two antlers that you got and clack them together, bang them around, scrape them on the ground, hit some brush, clack them, clack them together, and it simulates a fight. Sure enough, Teddy was videoing the two bucks fighting and all that commotion, and here comes a bigger buck. And he was about three and a half, four and a half year old deer, mm-hmm. bigger horn, and it looked like he wanted to jump in the fight. And then it looked like he was just going to be the special referee. And then finally he came in, and he's the one that busted up the fight. Yeah. Hey, come on, guys, knock it off. I already got the pussy. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that was awesome, though. Oh, dude, that, that's proof right there that rattling would work. You know, that, that. And that was a good idea of yours, you know, take some time off and go rattle and see if we can rattle up a buck. But we got too much shit going on to do that. I know, just trying to close up. But, you know, like during uh, the season, just trying to, to get our numbers, and we're sitting in the stands so much, you ain't got time yeah. to rattle the horns. No. Uh-uh. I'm too fucking tired to. I got <laughs> I, you know, to, you know, I'm going back to L.A., you know, on the 7th is when I fly back. And goddamn, it's going to take me a couple of days just to rest up and recover. And like I said, I said on the last podcast, people think I come over here and fuck around. Ah, oh, yeah, Austin just down there. Yeah, he's a deer on him. Yeah, motherfucker. Come out here and hang with me. I, I, I'd like to do a reality show out here. It ain't got to be about deer hunting because a lot of people don't want to deer hunt. That, that's fine. Not about hunting, but just come out to the Broken Skull Ranch, learn how to build fence, how to drive a tractor. How to fix shit, mm-hmm. how to run a chainsaw, a weed eater, a push mower, just set shit up, just do work. And you have a goddamn good reality show out here. Just bring some of the biggest pussies on planet Earth to the Broken Skull Range. No, not really pussies, but people that are city slickers that want to just come out and learn what working outdoors is. Oh, dude, with the, the bugs and the stickers and the, you know, the snakes and the, the heat. You know, shit yeah. like that. Most of the time, that'll that'll cripple you know regular people. You know, and then again, we we haven't exactly treated our bodies like temples either this deer season. <laughs> I do not look like the Greek god that I had wanted to by season end. <laughs> Did you know, Mitch and I were swinging that sledgehammer the other day, and we were having to tag team that thing, breaking up that concrete, and it was like, good lord! I mean, I'm I'm sweating you know like a pig, and the booze is just pouring out of me. You know, <laughs> I had swung a couple before uh, you came over there, swinging that sledgehammer, knocking the concrete off the bottom of those posts we'd pulled up with a commoter tractor. And I was like, yeah, man, this is a good little workout. But after about three of those motherfuckers, it's like, yeah, you guys go ahead and do that. I'm going to get the bucket to the tractor so we can put the cement in. I, after all, i gotta be the I got to be the job foreman. Someone's going to be a foreman. <laughs> 
I was like scooping up all those flagstone, and I started throwing that in the bucket. It was like, dude, wait a minute. <laughs> goddamn, speaking of mess, you talk about that. He ain't even redneck. This son of a bitch is a goddamn country. He's a mountain man He's out of Sparks, Nevada. He's a guide, and he, he can fix anything. But uh, Ted had taken some uh, deer meat down to Country Slaughter, Victoria, because Mitch was only going to be here for about four days, Kristen's brother-in-law. And we really wanted to, him to be able to take back that deer meat with him. He got a bunch made into sausage and some hamburger. And so uh, Ted went down and got it and picked it up and got it here to the ranch. And I was like, you know what, well, maybe you can take back a little bit of it. And uh, he took back all of all it. All of it, yeah. There's a couple hundred pounds of deer meat now. Correct, correct. And this motherfucker, did he have a cooler? No, he did not have a single cooler. Well, I had some extra suitcases from back in my wrestling days stuck in my <laughs> closet over there. Back in the day, Teddy, all the boys used to work. Back in the day, Teddy, all the boys used to use Toomey suitcases. I mean, if you wanted to look like somebody, because it's a good brand of suitcase. Right, right. So if you was one of the boys and you was, you know, you knew what, what was happening, you got to have the in right, suitcase. Right, right, right. You don't want to be dragging some piece of shit, Samson. And all due respect to Samson, man. I had a couple of them in my day. But you know those fold-together plastic shells? No. You had to have a Toomey pull out with a roller handle on it. So he loaded up a couple of extra my suitcases that I'd retired many years ago and went to the damn airport. I guess he's flying American or whatever. And one of his bags weighed about a pound over. I think I think seventy pounds is the yeah, limit. Correct. And one of his one of his bags was like seventy one pounds. <laughs> and this thing was just full of frozen deer sausage and hamburger <laughs> meat, which we'd had in the freezer for a couple of days. So it was hard as a brick. And all of a sudden they opened up his suitcase. <laughs> People see all this fucking sausage. It's you know it's professionally shrink wrapped, but it's sausage. And it's in a garbage bag. And yeah, <laughs> that was his insulation. So he takes the link out, puts it in his backpack, and then the lady says, "Okay, we can zip it up now." I don't think one fucking link of sausage was going to bring the plane down. And what difference does it make if it's in the fucking bag or in his backpack? It's still on the airplane. I think it's about you put the heavy, uh, heavy bag sticker on the suitcase for the person who's got a handle, I guess. Yeah, yeah, so they got they... a 70 pound limit out there. Fucking motherfuckers used to throw in bags, man. Shit. <laughs> oh, one link of sausage. Oh, I yeah. think you can see the guy there. Oh, yeah. That was straw that broke the camel's back. He opens up that damn suitcase. Oh, see, this is what got me. A fucking link of deer sausage. I see a workman's comp claim coming. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured, hell, if he got hungry, if, if uh, you know, the plane had to get diverted to another location or whatever, he just pull out that link of sausage and start snacking. <laughs> I could see him doing that, you know, get, get in the overhead container, pull out his backpack, and, you know, tear open that deer sausage, start gnawing on it. Oh, God damn. Boy, we gave that son of a hard time out oh. here. He made a shot on a deer that wasn't so chilly red hot and so... He heard about that for three solid days from <laughs> Ted Fowler, 361, and myself, ragging him, cocksucker, no-shooting motherfucker. God damn it. <laughs> what about trying to give him directions to the deer stand? Now, here's what I see. <laughs> this guy, a, he was a guide in right. Nevada, in the big country. I mean, thousands, hundreds of thousands of acres. I mean, the whole fucking state. And he comes out here to my place. It's 2,000 acres. It's shaped like a rectangle. And we're giving him directions to the simplest stand on the fucking property. And he goes, now, now, how do I do this? Do I go this way or do, you know, do I go this other way and go down that road? And he was working us. Because I was sitting there, and he, he fooled me. He 100% he had me hook, line, and sinker. I'm like, you stupid motherfucker. Go down to there, hang that left, get to that fence line, hang that left. You go about a half mile, there's the road way in. And he started asking you. And so I got to get, he's like Daniel Day-Lewis. Somebody's worked me like a goddamn neck bone. I've been in hook, line, and sinker. I'm thinking, how can this guy know how to get out anywhere in the world? Right. And then, fuck, he gets going to get lost on the Broken Skull Ranch. Yeah, where he's goddamn where, mad at him. Where he's fenced in. Yeah. And I, I, I was laughing my ass off because I said, dude, get on this all weather road and just follow it north to the front gate. And you go, yeah, goddamn it. I wish you'd fucking go out the front gate, too, and just keep on going. <laughs> Okay, it's time for a quick word of thanks to one of my longtime sponsors who also happens to be a close personal friend, Diamond Dallas Page and his DDPY program. 
And if you ain't on the DDPY program yet because you're not really sure if it's the right choice for you, just look at Mick Foley. He's the latest DDPY convert, and he's dropped over 100 pounds, and he's in the best shape of his life. And if that ain't incentive enough, maybe this is. Dallas is offering the biggest sale ever on DDP Yoga right now. He's giving y'all 25% off the DDP Yoga Now app, the DDPY DVDs, and all DDPY swag. You can get 25% off t-shirts, mats, heart monitors, hats, and more. Just go to ddpyoga.com slash Austin. And that's not all. If you buy the DDPY Max Pack today, you'll get 50% off your second copy. So that's 50% off the 25% off you're already getting. That's huge savings. And, of course, if you buy the DDPY DVDs for 25% off, you still get three free months of the DDP Yoga Now app. So take control of your own health and fitness in the new year. Get on the DDPY program today and take advantage of this huge sale. 25% off. All DDPY related merch at ddpyoga.com slash Austin. That's ddpyoga.com slash Austin. Mitch is also a master trapper. So y'all been hearing the skunk problems. Hershey's Wonder Dog got sprayed by a skunk about a month, month and a half ago. It seems like for fucking ever. I've aged in about six dog years being out here on this ranch with all the work and the hunting. I apologize for my... <laughs> Maybe some of the drinking... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mitch is also a master trapper, and the skunk problem still exists out here, and he was scratching around underneath my house over there. And so Mitch went out there, being the master trapper that he is, made a one-way door so that if the skunk went out the door, it swiveled back, and you couldn't get back in. Right. I think he put some flour or something down on the ground to see if there's going to be any skunk tracks. Someone said they had heard the one-way door open and close, but I think the skunk is still up underneath the house because the other night it was still scratching around there. So do you know any whereabouts about the goddamn skunk? No, dude, I still haven't. I heard him. I haven't seen him. So if you heard him, he didn't go out the one-way no, door? No, no, no. Because no. if he's going to go out the one-way door, he's going to be in the front yard, which is fenced in, but they got a square through the bull panel he can get out. But I was worried about if the somebody's got mad, it was just going to hang around. He could spray one of the dogs if they went out to take a or me if I wanted to take a take out a piss in the middle of the night. <laughs> no, but he'll be he'll be gone here shortly. After you guys leave, I'll take care of him. Oh, no, okay. Well, I told you, gonna, I, I, what's your proposition on taking care of the skunk? I told you what I was going to do. What? Set the live trap out there. All right. Put a little string on it. Yep. After you catch him. Yep. Just reel him, reel him to the fence. Yep. Shoot him. Get him away from the house. Ted, I wish you luck in your endeavors with the skunk. <laughs> you Wait. guys, you guys won't be here. <laughs> I know exactly. Because the you know, last thing I need to just go out there and just you know try to take a leak in the yard and get sprayed by a skunk. <laughs> so hey, let me know what happens. I I'd like to see that motherfucker gone. I will. I will. So let me see. I'm just going over this list. The tractor broke, but then it got fixed. So now we're mowing again. Oh, here, here's a heads up for you. You know that Sendero I was cutting when I passed you in the feed wagon? Yeah. Uh, I want to cut that north end from the Carrizo to Turnbuckle right. and the uh, north fence line uh, all the way from brush to brush. But, man, dude, when you're doing a recut like that, you can mow in fourth gear. Really? I'm mowing at 4.6, 4.7 miles uh -huh. an hour. Dude, that's twice you the normal shit. speed. Yeah. Yeah, that's like hauling ass. Yeah. And I mean, it's doing a good cut, too. It's not, no, you're going too fast and you're making a shitty cut. Well, and you you're got the new blades Got the new blades on it as well. Yeah, but yeah. It's, but like I said, it, it's just low growth. I mean, technically, you know, you, you I, I could wait for it to grow higher. Right. But we're here. You know, I ain't got nothing else to do but work, so I want to cut all the senderos like that and, and get it done. But that was just through experimentation because n normally running in three low, you know, I'm cutting around three two, three point three miles an hour. When you can cut at four six and still get a good cut, yeah, that's makes a big that's hauling ass. Difference. That is hauling ass. Yeah, so that's a FYI for you in case you uh, just do some recut stuff. All right. Okay, so you got the the buck fight. Uh, we margarita spilled and broke my computer. I'm using my backup computer. See, this is because my wife put these things uh, all in a certain order. Uh, the flight back. Let's not talk about the flight back. I, you know what? I'm trying to call my guy to get my uh, SUV shipped back to California, and he won't answer the phone. I wonder if he's okay. 
hopefully, you know, he didn't party too hard on New Year's Eve. Well, you guys are driving that to the airport and then just parking it there, and then they'll pick it up? Yep. That's the way That's the way they shipped it down there. They shipped it down, and we flew into the FBO, and they had the keys up there at the front counter. Well, we'll okay. just get out and just go get in our car, so we'll leave it there. Now, also, I've got to get Buck the Mule shipped back to uh, California, so maybe uh, one of these days when you come back, uh, you know, you're going to be here for a little bit, but when you come back, a guy can come pick up Buck right. and ship him back out to Cali. Uh, I want to thank uh, UVC Power Sports once again for outfitting that mule. I paid for it. They gave me a good deal, uh, but I paid for all that shit, so I don't, don't, don't think I got a bunch of free shit thrown on my mule. I paid for it. Um, I'm proud of it. It looks good. That front end replacement looks good. I had that windshield on there. The windshield was good it, if it gets cold enough, but it's so damn dust in here. It makes that dust recirculate back in that cab. Mm -hmm. So it's a quick release uh, windshield, and it's dot grade, whatever you call it. It's a badass windshield. I just pulled it off. I'm going to put my uh, canopy basket back on my regular gun rack. The vertical gun rack is cool. Mm -hmm. I like my shit laying there so I can use it. And when I got that canopy rack, I can use it as a rest. Oh. Uh. You know? Yeah, you know what? I saw that vertical rack with the um, the little tension yeah. deals. Those, that looks like a pretty neat. It's a great you know, system. Yeah. 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 If you're just going somewhere, it's a great system. Yeah. But, man, I just like that basket so much. And you, you can run that vertical gun rack with the, with the basket as well. Right. And just take those, take off those other gun mounts. But what what makes the other one so handy is because they're laying right there, you know, diagonal mm -hmm. next to you. you yeah, you just pick it up, on the flip, it, boom, flip it over. There. Yeah. yeah. Boy, those lights, those light bars really worked out. We saw it tonight. Saw it in action with those God deer in front of the dang. house. Man, I tell you what, it looks like a fucking spaceship out there. <laughs> There's a lot of lights on that, mister. I made a, uh, you know, Shannon and the gang dropped off Buck the Mule, and man, I went over all the buttons, all the bells and whistles and the switches. I got a horn installed on this son of a bitch. I should have had to put some blinkers on this cocksucker. <laughs> It's like he's my blinkers out here driving around the ranch. Dude, that fucking horn. Yeah, but dude, that'll make a deer look. <laughs> you need one of those, you know, like, ooh, God. Ain't, that, nah, ain't gonna be none of that shit. That horn cost me 50 bucks. Get off my ass. <laughs> you made that deer. That, when I came uh, back to the house a while ago, I was running down the road, had my lights on, and Ted's got some bright lights on his rig, too. And he was shining on a buck right there in the front yard. I said, oh, I see what he's doing. I was looking at him through my, with my binoculars. So I brought him with my light bar. We double, just, you know, just looking at him because he's right in our front yard. And man, that deer, I ain't never seen that deer before. No, no. He was a young deer, too, three yeah. and a half. Yeah, got a pencil horn, uh, yeah. eight, and then that 10 was in front of him. Yeah. But nothing nothing to brag about. No. It was just neat and put him in that light. Yeah. Uh, got a backup light. Uh, God dang, who, who did those... Uh, the bumpers on that thing. Oh, think of it a minute. They did a good job on those bumpers. I got a backup light on that bumper, but you don't need no backup light on a bumper. You know that that light that bar. That big light bar. The light Correct. bar in the back. That's Correct. all you need. Right, right. And it's got enough ambient light so you can see what's in the bed of your damn uh, mule as well. I saw those little cube lights on the back. I mean, you can rotate those. You can rotate and those. Adjust them. I, she's got them there so I can look at the fence line. Uh -huh. But I'm gonna uh, just loosen them up, point them back into the bed. Into the bed. Uh, again, uh, that that was full bore to do it right. All you need is a light bar on the front, light bar on the back. You're covered. Right, right. But goddamn, when you light that son of a bitch up, I mean, you, you, you looks like a fucking spaceship out it's there. It's got a winch on the front of it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got that front yeah. end replacement. And then uh, on my other two mules, she's going to put an ox rack on the uh, the ranch edition, mm. the, the four, uh, the two door, or the four door, and uh, that's all. Just dome lights in both, and then that's all. We're not doing anything of those. And they're doing the service. Custom rims on that thing? Yeah. Yeah, dude, you're like modern day Ric Flair, you know, <laughs> limousine riding. <laughs> hey, man, when Ric Flair came out here to the ranch, we did a Stone Cold podcast down here, and Rick piled out of the damn. I don't know, it was an SUV, it was a Lincoln Town car. It looked like he'd been, he'd been sleeping. He came in from the San Antonio airport from Atlanta. He goes, Jesus Christ, Austin, are we in Afghanistan? <laughs> <laughs> He'd never been so far in the remote in his entire life. This is he, out there. You know, he's somewhat of city slicker, but yeah. So, it, it, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm I'm riding in style out there. <laughs> now, I dig those wheels. I like the stock wheels, too. Right. But she tricked this thing out, and it, it matched the uh, the color scheme with what we did. So that's why we went that direction. I did the barbed wire down the side and the broken skull ranch and the buck on the side. I mean, I really, you know, I looked at it today. I didn't really... You know, paid any. I I didn't want to get out there yesterday as haggard as I was looking, you know, around everybody. But now that everybody's left, I looked it over. It's it's a good ride. It's a yeah, cool ride. I like those seat covers. 
Oh, man. You know, yeah. And uh, they do a good job with those uh, upholstery because they're contoured seats, so you kind of sink back right. in them a little bit. And that that's like that uh, faux, or should you say fake, crocodile. Right. But it's tacky. I mean, it's sticky. So, I mean, you know, you get traction on it. Mm -hmm. You don't slide around on it. So, yeah, I dig it, man. It, it's pretty cool. Uh, we ran out of dog food, so my dogs are eating the fish that I bought with the good intentions of eating right. <laughs> That's another note from my wife. <laughs> Your dogs come first, man. God damn it, man. We run short on dog food. I think it comes in the, in the mail tomorrow and right before we leave on Saturday. And so, man, we, you know, I was going to get in shape while I was down here at the ranch. And, of course, start hanging around with Ted Fowler 361 and left them on devices out here in the middle of nowhere. Dude, there's something about... It ain't South Texas. It's just something about being in the fucking woods. No, We're yeah. out here away from civilization. Just grilled chicken breast, you know, a plain baked potato and broccoli. Yeah, you can do it. But in the middle of the day when you're working, you come off the tractor, you just go throw a couple of three pieces of ham and some cheese, some mustard mayonnaise on some whole wheat bread, and you wolf that cocksucker down, you go back and you get back to it. Right. So I had all the intentions of eating like a fucking bodybuilder while i was out here i got tilapia over there frozen cod so now that's what my wife is cooking for the dogs to fill in with some of their other dog food to wait till the other shit gets in so those motherfuckers are living high on the hog over here <laughs> dude i got two packages of uh frozen sea trout i could probably do do with one of them give you the other one <laughs> If it comes down to it, so you ain't gonna starve to death. I don't, you know, I don't know that. I, I don't. I, I won't need to eat it. I'm doing good with. Uh, I had a, a link of deer sausage. The, the only link of deer sausage that Mitch didn't take with him, I gave uh, Shannon from uh, UV Country Four Links uh, Broken Skull Ranch deer sausage, the most expensive deer sausage in the world. <laughs> God Almighty! Oh, we got the the flight back. Uh, we got. I'm gonna make Bloody Marys. I'm gonna use the Trader Joe's 1.5 liter uh, bottle to put in my Bloody Mary mix, and uh, my Tito's vodka, and we'll use that for the flight home. Now, don't don't get me wrong, folks. I'm not gonna get all shit faced up in the air because I know I gotta drive when I get to LAX and get in my damn car and drive my wife and my dogs back to safety, back to our house. And actually, we're not gonna be driving back to our house. We're gonna be driving back to the house that we're renting because our house mm. is being remodeled. We just got the news today that coastal, what's it called, coastal exemptions, coastal clearance. No, we got the, we got windstorm. Whatever That's the that, fuck yeah, it is, yeah. it's coastal CC yeah. this or something that yeah. finally cleared. None of our neighbors are protesting the fact that hell, all the cocksuckers around me done rebuilt their fucking houses. I've been listening to them hammer nails and drop cement and do all kinds of shit for the last five years. So I was just waiting for one motherfucker to say, no, 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 we don't want to listen to y'all's racking over there at 316. <laughs> I've come to Jesus meeting with that motherfucker. We're just doing a light remodel on this bitch. But you've got to go through the process and get all your permits. You guys aren't in a homeowners association deal no, over there, are you? No, uh, we're just a regular neighborhood. Huh. But you still, you got to jump through the hoops. I tell you what, though, we got a hell of a contractor over there. I'm glad that we hooked up with this guy because he's kind of like you, honest as the day is long, right. square about his work, knows what he's talking about. So some of the pictures, you know, that he sent us is some of the work that someone did before he got there, and he's having to fix a lot of right, this shit. Right, and, right. You know, yeah. oh, it, it's not oh, like yeah. uncommon. No. But when no, you see it and it's your crib, it's like, man, what, what the fuck was somebody thinking? And who was the inspector when this shit was going on? Dude, that's the problem. That stuff isn't getting inspected or it wouldn't be done like that. You know, it's some homeowner that has watched a little bit of HGTV and thinks, you know what, I can move an electrical outlet from here to there. I can add a switch. I can add a light, you know, do stuff like that. And if nothing else, man, it's unsafe. You know, it's unsafe for, for you guys because if they're running wires through the wall, through the studs and stuff, you go to hang a picture – and and you just grab a nail and, and go to pound it in there, and just by, you know, a dumb luck, you hit that wire. Yeah, that's some bitch arc. Then, you know. Oh, dude, it's a funny thing you said that. Some of the wire things, yeah, we found some of the braces. I mean, there's a diagonal brace that's cut in two. So he's going to ply with that because that's where we put our TV. We're going to right. run it on the wall. Right. Going to put on a, on a nightstand or whatever you call it. Hmm. And uh, so he's going to apply with that all in, but also just to give it the, the support that it needed. And it's like, man, are you fucking kidding me? 
oh, cut a fucking support beam in two or a diagonal? What, what that, direction is going? That pork chop is used to straighten up the wall. That's that diagonal beam. Yeah, you put a put a, a cheater bar or nail a stud on it, cut off stud, so you can pull it and it'll square up the wall. You know, during framing. Yeah, it is supposed to stay intact. It's not supposed to be cut in two. Well, I told my wife, you know, because uh, we're getting all the walls skim coated. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're gonna repaint it, mm-hmm. but so you know, there's some waves, you know, and some of that old shit. Right. And it had that orange peel texture, whatever. Right. I wanted, you know, the different texture to be more modern, because you know we ain't done shit to that house. Uh, hell, I hit the pause button, and uh, I was trying to think of what I was fixing to say, and you said what? What kind of texture are they doing? Are they spraying a knockdown, or are they hand doing a skip trowel? What's a skip trowel? You ever seen them do stucco on the outside? Well, yeah. Okay. No, man, it's going to be like smooth paint. Oh, okay. I mean, not like smooth, but I mean, like, our, our shit's kind of orange peeling looking. Okay. Skip trial is where they take, yeah. you know, like a, a concrete float, and they take their, their um, trough full of mud, scoop it up, mix a little silica sand in there so it's not, you know, slick, and then they just kind of bounce it across the wall, and you get different patterns. Oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 we're not doing uh, that. We're okay, doing just like okay. a smooth finish. Right. But this, this, this is like I that, that old shit. Okay, take for instance, you remember that old shit when you got the cottage sheet? Yeah, the old popcorn ceiling, okay. acoustic ceiling. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of out, out of style. Correct, now. correct. So I mean, we don't have that, but it's it's like a similar type thing on the wall, but not to that degree. It's, it's probably orange peel. Okay, yeah. orange peel. The stuff they do now is is you know we don't get anybody in Rockport that does skip trial because it's too labor intensive. You know, they're, they're big thing. Full finishes and shit like that? No, dude, yeah. there's no. Nah. What those guys do is they call it a knockdown texture. Basically, it's a heavy orange peel where they stand back with the hopper and spray it, uh, let it flash over a bit, and then go over it with a big taping knife and, and flatten it out smooth. That's knockdown. Yeah, so my shit is just going to be just gonna flat be smooth. down yeah. smooth. Yeah. yeah. Now my wife's got the last meal at Cancun she brought me uh, today. My wife went into Pleasanton, Texas today to get our last bit of groceries, and she brought me three beef enchiladas <laughs> and three beef tacos from Cancun Mexican Food there in Jordanton slash Pleasanton, Texas, damn near across from the Walmart. Goddamn. Uh, if y'all ever pass through that area, go there and get the same meal I just uh, mentioned to you. It's right behind another Mex- it's right behind another Mexican food restaurant called, uh, I can't remember what, it's by, what, it's, what it is. The one gets more attention because it's right there on the main drag. But go to Cancun's because they've got the best damn food in, in uh, Jordanton. But, uh, Teddy, uh, how are you? You good? You tired? You ready to take your ass to the house? Yeah, dude, I'm fucking tired. What the fuck? I'm tired. I'm ready to start shooting birds. It was nice to sleep in a little bit this morning. You know, slept in until about 730. I had to go take, you know, take those deer into town. Um no, dude, I'm I'm like you. I'm ready to, you know, ratchet it back a little bit with the drinking, uh, get back into shape. I mean, that was a novel idea to have me bring the prowler out here. You know, we ain't touched it. <laughs> I thought we would. I thought, I mean, I thought we you. would, too. <laughs> hey, man, before we take a break and come back and answer a couple of these questions, I don't even know what they sent in. I thought some people were going to send in resolutions and shit like that, and I didn't hammer the point home enough, but... There's a couple of uh, questions that people sent in. But tell me the story, uh, or tell the people the story, because a lot of times what we do out here at the Rogan School Ranch is, man, this year, Ted took three deer to the processing company. I took three deer, and Mitch took three deer to the processing company to get made into sausage, whatnot, whatever. We all had our mix done. But we can't eat all the deer that we have to take off the ranch. So Ted has a, a guy that he'll meet at certain places and will transfer the deer from Ted's truck to or hit. So what they'll do is transfer the deer from Ted's truck to whoever's truck that he's meeting. But one of his buddies was going to get some uh, deer meat. And uh, I think you took off from the ranch with, what, six, eight deer in the back of your pickup truck? Uh, yeah, there was eight. But And you was going to stop in Beeville. Right. Well, I'm eating my. I'm eating, <laughs> this story. I'm, a, I'm eating my. I'm eating my my nephew in Beeville tomorrow to uh, pick up the deer meat from the processor, and it's going to be in coolers and stuff like that. But tell me your extravaganza story about where the fuck you made the exchange this time. <laughs> that was that was the prior, the one prior to this. Yeah, no, because I was going back to Rockport for a day, and I was going to take. Uh, take Pete 
half a dozen deer and then take two to my painter there in Rockport. And Pete is a good friend of Ted's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I talked to Petey the night before, and he says, you know, hey, bro, i got to be in Beeville at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I said, well, that's perfect because I don't crawl out of the deer stand until, you know, 8. And if we shoot something, you know, it'll, it'll be 9 before I get on the road. All right, that's that's not a problem. I'll meet you there in Beeville, and then I'll continue on, you know, to Rockport for a quick turnaround and then come back here to the ranch. So I said, I'll shoot you a text in the morning when I'm on, on the road. You can, you know, tell me where we're going to meet up. So I shoot him a text, and he texts back an address for me, and I put it in my, you know, the map deal on my phone, and it says some, some funeral home in, in Beeville. And I'm looking, I'm, I go back to the text, I'm going, shit, did I type something in wrong? Nope, it's a funeral home. And I call Pete. I said, hey, dude, did they, the address you gave me is to a funeral home. You know, and, dude, I'm wearing my rubber boots, my holy jeans. I got deer blood all over me. I ain't comb, I ain't run a comb through my hair in about a week. You know, I haven't shaved. The only thing I'm doing regularly is brushing my teeth. You know, you talk about looking like a hillbilly. You know, and I got all these, you know, dead deer in the back of the truck. And I go, Pete, the address you gave me is to a funeral home. He goes, yeah, bro, man, my uncle, <laughs> it's my uncle's funeral. He says, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to the, you know, uh, to the cemetery. I'm just going to stay there for, you know, the, the memorial service. And about the time you get here, it'll be about the time that, that, you know, we're leaving. And I'm going, oh, dude, hey, man, I'll take these back to Rockport. You know, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm not comfortable with this. He's like, ah, oh, bro, don't worry about it. It's no, no problem at all. And I'm so, you know, being my decision-making skills sometimes, I said, to him, man, all right, whatever. I roll up to the funeral home, and I swear to God, they've got the sheriff out there going to do, you know, the motorcade, you know, to, to stop traffic, all of that stuff. There is a parking lot full of vehicles. There's the hearse. There's about 75 people standing outside, and here I come, old Jethro Bodine. <laughs> <laughs> Pete is coming across the parking lot. He's waving, you know, hoo hoo you know, and he's all dressed up nice and stuff. And I'm just sitting there going, oh, my God. And Pete jumps up into the back of his truck, throws the tailgate down. I get out in my rubber boots and my holy jeans, and I'm going, God damn it, Pete, are we really doing this? He's like, yeah, dude, it'll be fine. So we start transferring all these deer in the parking lot of this funeral home. Yeah, I was like, holy shit, I can't get out of here quick enough. <laughs> and our deer frozen solid because they've been in our coolers. <laughs> you should have took them into the funeral home, have a little service for them. <laughs> but, hey, those deer are going to feed a whole lot yeah. of people. Pete, Pete was like, man, I got something for you. And I'm going, yeah, I think God does too after this stunt. <laughs> yeah. I'm going, hey, dude, whatever you got, it can fucking wait. Because I I got a bad, bad bike. Because everybody's looking, you know, like, man, look at this fucking transient, you know. What are these guys doing? Humping all these deer from truck to truck, you know, here in the in the parking lot of the funeral home. Yeah, and then he came across with all those tamales. So it was, you know, hey. Oh, man, he brought like <laughs> seven dozen tamales. I was like, that was a very nice gesture. Because, yeah. man, them tamales yeah. were damn good. And not to mention, I was just lucky that you came out of that because I'm trying to make a little money on the side when you're running those deer up there to Beeville to Pete. I had about 16 kilos of cocaine stuffed in those deer. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I'm glad they made it. It had been a big hassle on me had you got pulled over or oh, something. Well, big had hassle you, on you, huh? Well, <laughs> if you got busted, that would have been your cocaine. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm kidding you, ain't running cocaine and dead yeah. deer. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hey, coming right back after pause for the calls, a word from a sponsor to keep the show on the air <laughs> two times a week. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know why, but they do. So I keep doing it. <laughs> I want to make another mixie. Hopefully I won't spill it on my computer and crash this motherfucker. This is my last show from the Broken Skull Ranch. Hanging out with Ted Fowler, 361. We're coming back to answer a couple of questions that you guys sent in. To questions at steveaustinshow.com. Hey, all you comedy fans out there, and I'm guessing that's pretty much everyone listening to this here award winning podcast and ain't never won no damn award. I got something for you. CISO. S E E S O. CISO. CISO is the new ad free streaming service bringing you all the comedy you can handle for $3.99. You get a near endless supply of top shelf stuff, exclusive originals, face melting stand up. 
Next day, late night shows and a catalog of classics. And with CISO, you can get your laugh on anytime, anywhere. They got every episode of Saturday Night Live, including brand new episodes the day after they air. CISO has a Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, the entire Monty Python catalog, and classic TV shows like 30 Rock and Parks and Recreation. And like I said, they got originals too, like Hidden America with Jonah Ray. This is CISO's fake travel show where the places are real, but the people are not. And right now, you can try CISO free for two months when you use promo code PODCAST1 at checkout. Just go to SEESO.com and sign up for two months free with promo code PODCAST1 at checkout. That's CISO.com, promo code PODCAST1. If you're in the market for a car, then you need to check out TrueCar.com and the TrueCar app. TrueCar gives you pricing information you need to feel confident about your purchase. When you register with TrueCar, you'll see what other people in your local market paid for the car you want. From there, you can connect with a local TrueCar certified dealer and enjoy a more confident car buying experience. TrueCar shows you real pricing on actual inventory, so you see competitive pricing offered to you by TrueCar certified dealers for vehicles that are actually on their lots. TrueCar makes car buying easy, no matter if you're looking for a brand new or a used vehicle. There's over 500,000 pre-owned vehicles available from TrueCar certified dealers nationwide, and there are over 13,000 TrueCar certified dealers. And over 2 million cars have been sold to TrueCar users by the TrueCar certified dealer network. True Car users save an average of over $3,000 off MSRP. So when you're ready to buy a new or used car, visit TrueCar.com or download the True Car app to enjoy a better car buying experience. Some features not available in all states. Steve Austin. Steve Austin. Unleashed. Unleashed. All right, back. Roll the sound here with Tough Battle 361. I just got me into the Crown Black and water. Just caught here water. Teddy's over here drinking. Carbach Hopadilla, it's a damn good IPA, based out of Houston, Texas. They just sold out. They sold one of the bigs bought them. You told me that. Yeah, yeah. good for them. Yeah. But I think they still got complete control and leeway to do whatever they want over there. They make a good beer. Teddy, people send us some questions. Now that we're through telling us some stories, let's answer a few questions. Okay. It's a question of Jonathan Myers, down in Santa Claus, Indiana. How would you name a town Santa Claus? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Steve, you mentioned your Chevy Z71 on numerous occasions, but I can't recall what year it is. That's a fucking 2003. P.S. If I could get another shout-out from my wife, Kendra, it would make her day again. You gave her a shout-out on a podcast right after WrestleMania 30, and she absolutely loved it. Hey, Jonathan, you motherfucker. I gave your wife, Kendra, a, shout- a shout-out. I'm going to give her another shout-out. Hey, Kendra, Steve Austin, how are you doing? Hey, Jonathan, stop sending these bogus emails asking me what your amount of my truck is. That was a setup, so you get another shout-out for your wife. <laughs> you better get a blowjob or something out of this, you cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, yep. next time you and Teddy uh, are answering questions, here's one I don't think you guys have ever answered. Teddy talks about playing golf sometimes, but has never said what kind of clubs he plays. So, Teddy, what's in the bag? You know what? I... Sh- my driver's a, a tailor-made, uh, like an XI4 or some, something like that. Hell, I don't even know. Um, and the clubs I've got are just a ping knockoff that I had made for me uh, custom length, you know. Yeah, but I, I don't shoot a name brand, you know, name brand. No, so shoot. you ain't swinging no high down No, fuck no. I no. brought my first set of clubs. I was living out there in Douglasville, Georgia, at a garage sale. I was pretty goddamn good. I remember, uh, I think, the best uh, score I had, I shot a 55 on a nine-hole course. I thought I was on fire. <laughs> I fucking just thought I was on fire. Of course, that's not worth a shit. But for me, at the time, it was. And then, you know, a few years later, I gave up golf and haven't taken it up yet. Again, uh, I like to go out every now and then and just go to driving range and knock the dog shit out of a few of them. But, you know, hell, I get there about a, a bucket of balls, maybe, and sh- I'm done bored and ready to move on to the next thing. But, you know, when you crack a good one, oh, yeah. and finally that son of a bitch doesn't slice right or hook left and just go straight, just, <laughs> just a fucking screamer. Like like Adam Sandler would hit in Happy Madison or whatever the fuck it is. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Happy Madison is, is this uh, movie company. Right. Goddamn, when you, when you hit one of those screamers, that's fun. Oh, yeah. And just yeah. the feeling. Kind of like when we were shooting that gong that you bought me the other right. day. Right, that, that, that metal silhouette target. Just, it's the same feeling. 
well, dude, I got that tea box at the house. You know what I mean? I get a kick out of, I've got two five-gallon buckets full of um, Callaway X out range balls. You know, I got drunk and bought them off of eBay. You know, you can get 300 used golf balls for 50 bucks. Throw them out on that, you know, tea box I made and hit them over the water. You know, I got a couple of flag sticks, a couple of flag sticks, two different distances. Uh, got one of those little pickup deal so i don't have to bend over and pick them up i just walk around there and you know scoop them up and i get a kick out of that you know take a couple of beers out there and hit you know 100 golf balls and go back inside the house dude if i would just do it at my crib like that yeah that's the thing yeah yeah i could sit out here and fuck around for a long time yeah same thing with shooting you know shooting my bow you know i can just walk out the back of the house and I've got, you know, McKenzie Target, I've got hay bales, all that stuff there. And I can just, you know, fling either my, my compound or um, my crossbow, you know, do whatever. Turn around and go back in the house. Yeah, but, I mean, if you got to drive somewhere to go do that, no. Shit, see, no. here's the thing. Back in the day when I used to play golf, one of my outlaw days, see, like, I'd go to the range, and I'd pick up a bunch of red stripe balls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> Globe like on the national treasure. They put that red stripe or whatever color stripe they use on those golf balls to mark them as range balls. And so, like everybody else here, talk, talk, playing with Nike or Taylor or whatever the golf right, ball names right, are. Right, right. Hey, man, wh- wh- where's my ball at? Is, wh- what are the brands? What are the brands? Well, Titleist Pro V. I shoot a Nike. Yeah. Uh, but there's there's Callaway, there's yeah. the all, all the good yeah, shit. Every, and it's just, it's Steve, is this, uh, this Taylor yours? No, no, I might as well the red stripe. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, man, it's a range ball. I don't give a fuck, it's my ball. I picked it up, it's my ball. That, that's what I'm playing with. And see, no, it, it don't make a shit whether I'm hitting the, the highest dollar golf ball or the range ball. It's going to go to the same place, wherever the fuck I hit it. <laughs> that- <laughs> <laughs> That's the ball you use when you're teeing off over water. You're not too sure if you can make it, and you don't want to sink, you know, a seven dollar ball. Yeah, for your first shot that you claim as a mulligan if you don't make it. <laughs> so if you make it, then you put your tailor back That's down. Yeah. You, you invoke the lift, clean, and replace rule, where if your if your ball has a, an impediment on it, a spot of mud, you can pick it up in the fairway, wipe it off, and and that's when you do the old switcheroo. You take take the range ball out of play. Do the golf ball the same thing with the pool cue, the, ball, the, the golf clubs. It's the same shit, man. And see those guys walking into the pool hall with their little case, screw the cue together. They probably buy five hundred dollars a grand in that cue. I don't know. And then there's an old boy over in the back using that cue right off the wall. The old big house bow stick. In it. The old house Crooked stick. as a motherfucker. You know how you always check out a pool cue yeah. when you roll it across the table? Like, rah, 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 rah. And he just fucking chalks it up, <laughs> breaks them, and all of a sudden he takes everybody to town. Mm-hmm. You know, after you know, three or $400 later, the guy unscrews his stick, <laughs> puts it back in the box, <laughs> and walks out the damn hall with three or 400 bucks left up in the bar. And his tail between his legs. Right. Dude, that's one thing we haven't done is shot pool. I don't oh. think we've been anywhere with pool table. Dude, you don't want to be anywhere near me with the pool table because if you beat me, I will hit you with a pool cue. There's an ongoing story out here because I had a, I got one of those uh, arcade dart boards out here that ring, rings up the score for you. And uh, fuck, I had that thing a long time ago. It's still here, but I gave it to Ted. And I said, shit, man, you got a dart game? Because I thought I was pretty good. He goes, yeah, I played a time or two. I'm fixing it. Well, I'm fixing to kick this motherfucker's ass. And that son of a bitch proceeded to strum me like a six-string guitar. <laughs> While I was madder than a goddamn hornet, drunk on top of that, I thought we was going to go to fighting. <laughs> you know, we'd shake hands after every goddamn game because you've got to be good sports about it. But I never forgot it. And so this year, I gave Ted the dartboard, and I'm just waiting for him to take the cocksucker home. <laughs> Tried to rope me into playing the other day because my nephew was over here and said, Uncle Steve, can we, what about that dot? My nephew was out here the other day. Ted tried to get me to play the other day. He, he uh, got to poking uh, my nephew, my nephew Neil, who was out here. And uh, Neil came up to me and goes, Uncle Steve, what about that dart board over there? He goes, can we play tonight? I said, no, man. I said, and Ted was over there kind of looked, <laughs> not looking so he could see if I was going to get roped in. Man, I was way too smart for that shit. <laughs> I said, Neil, I said, that's Ted's dart. <laughs> if you want to go play darts with Ted, go ahead. I said, I ain't got nothing to do with that motherfucker. Remember the deal early on in the season with the zip ties? Remember yeah. that? 
<laughs> yeah, you said you can take all them fucking zip ties with you when you take the goddamn dartboard. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know how to jerry-rig a zip tie. You can't even explain that on a podcast. No, no, no. Let's move on to another all question. Right. God damn it. Steve, I hear you mention you don't sleep well. I also struggle with having a good night's sleep. Do you or have you tried any natural sleep aids? What do you feel up to snuff during the day? Caffeine, supplements, etc. cetera? You just used to feeling tired. Zach in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I ain't never tried too many things uh, as far as natural sleep aids at work. I pre- Quite frankly, I prefer prescription grade. <laughs> <laughs> I do require a prescription pill to go to sleep. I'm like a light switch. I'm either on or I'm off. As far as filling up to snuff during the day, hey, man, when you've been beat up for 14 years, hitting the head with steel chairs, and you wake up, that's going to be a good day. <laughs> so I drink my two cups of coffee. It's not like I need a bunch of amphetamines and uh, sniff glue to have a good day. Uh, I don't really feel tired during the day. Uh, there's a period of the day about, you know, 3, 4 o'clock out here just because the schedule we're on. I like to take a little 30-minute cat nap, but no, man, I'm good. Uh, melatonin I used to be a big fan of, but it doesn't really work for me anymore. So, dude, I just, but I just, it, it is what it is. I'm used to it. I've been doing this shit for 52 years. I got it down pretty good. Tell you, you ain't got no sleep problems, do you? No, dude, I sleep like a baby. Well, speaking of babies, here's a question for you. That had nothing to do with the baby, does it? <laughs> Hey, Steve, I love listening to your podcast. They brighten my day so much. Thank you. You're welcome. This question is regarding your friend, Ted Fowler. I noticed on his Twitter account he's following tattoo-related accounts such as beautifully tattooed and hot ink girls. (laughs) Does Ted just enjoy women with tattoos, or does he have an interest in tattoos himself? Does Ted have any tattoos? Paul Yates, Scotland. (laughs) Tell me about beautifully tattooed and hot. Hot ink girls. Oh, dude. Yeah, no, I dig chicks with tattoos. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, I've, me got, more. I've got half a dozen tattoos myself. Um, no, dude, they're, you know, it's interesting to look at. I like beautiful women. <laughs> I like beautiful women with tattoos. And both of those Twitter accounts have them. God damn. <laughs> you, you cocksucker. <laughs> Dude, I gotta, I gotta keep on top of my game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find another goddamn email. Well, that, okay. was, that was out of left field there. <laughs> Casey Daniels, best way to avoid a hangover: stay drunk. Love it, yeah, Casey. I had to shoot. <laughs> I ain't lying to you. Here's a question. Hey, Stephen Ted, I was listening to the show the other week, and you mentioned some of the awful films that you've done. <laughs> but The Condemned is one hell of a film, and you're a bona fide badass in it. But what's your condition to Michael J. White? Were you friends before your films? Oh, and Ted, I don't know if you're involved in much woodwork, but what, in your professional opinion, is the best finish for a raw pine or a pool cue case, i.e. wax, varnish, etc.? Love the podcast. Keep up the good work. Lay B from Nottingham, UK. First of all, The Condemned was a badass movie. And yeah, I was pretty much a rock star in that movie, and I'm blowing smoke up my ass. Yeah, I could have done a couple scenes better, but what the fuck is my first movie? As far as Michael Jai White goes, man, I've been a Michael Jai White fan for a long time, just as far as his martial arts skills. Michael is one of the smartest people you'll ever work with. Tell stories all day long, very charismatic, and very knowledgeable in many fighting systems. So, man, he's just a badass dude. Uh, but you're right, Condemned. I got robbed that year for Best uh, best Actor and Best Film. Teddy, uh, what's the best uh, finish for Raw Pine? Like if someone's going to make a pool cue case or whatever, they're, they're saying like IE wax or varnish, etc. You remember those little uh, jewelry boxes that I made? Yep. And I was making, and I'm still am still am making with a crazy wood. Uh, I like to stain them, and the the finish that I like to use is a hand rub wax made by Min Wax. You know, you you rub it on, rub it off, that type of deal. And then I will take an orbital buffer and and buff that wax off so it's not sticky, it's not tacky. Man, that finish. You're not going to scratch it. Doesn't show fingerprints. 
easy to maintain, and it's it's not glossy. It doesn't shine. I hate wood that, that is real super shiny like that. Okay. With that being said, and you're still making these boxes, mm-hmm. why don't you make an eBay account and sell them motherfuckers on eBay? Dude, why don't we go dove hunting tomorrow? I ain't got time for got that time. shit. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you what. I'll throw I'll throw some boxes up. We'll call them broken skull jewelry boxes. I'll cut you in for I don't know thirty percent. We got to renegotiate. Dude, that's fucking just... mailbox money. You're sitting there in Marina Del Rey going to the mailbox. Got another check from Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> what what are we gonna sell these things for? A thousand a piece. The big ones. Hey Steve, how do you spend your time while recuperating from surgery during most of the year two thousand? I drank like a goddamn fish. <laughs> I drove to Sonic in my hard neck brace, almost choked to death on a jalapeno burger. I drank a lot of beer, and I just fiddle fucked around. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> Nothing much has changed. <laughs> Except the neck brace. <laughs> yeah, I'm not rocking the neck brace anymore, but other than that. <laughs> hey, Steve, what were your thoughts when Vince announced the XFL? Also, what did you think of the product at the time? What do you think looking back? Man, I asked Vince why he wanted to compete against the NFL. And uh, he said, man, Steve, I, I want to give people football uh, the way that football should be given to them. He had a different vision of it, a different version of it. And many people have said, had not, um, you know, they pulled the plug a year sooner than they were supposed to, maybe it would have made it. I don't know. I thought it was a real big gamble, a real big risk. It didn't pan out, but had he got that extra year, who knows what would have happened. I was a big fan of it. Uh, I just, you know, they didn't have quite the athletes that the NFL does, of course. But the product was what it was. Uh, They tried to bring, you know, football with a a little bit more, a different spin to it, a little more titillation to it, you know, with the cheerleaders and stuff like that. Hey, looking back, you know, here's the thing I always give Vince McMahon credit for. He's got, you know, if he wants to try something, he ain't scared to try it. Ico Pro, uh, bodybuilding, the WBF, XFL, you know, his calling card is pro wrestling, sports entertainment. That's what he's the best at. That's what he's the king at. He's tried some of these other things, and not so well at them. But goddamn, when it came to pro wrestling, sports entertainment, he knocked it out of the park and put everybody out of business. So. Do you ever remember watching XFL? I vaguely remember that. I mean, I'm not a huge football fan anyway, but yes, I do. I do remember, but I couldn't tell you, you know, how long it was on. Man, here's a good question from Juan Mariscal. You send me a lot of questions, Juan. I see you on Twitter all the time. What's your advice for cutting social media usage? I'm pretty sure I'm addicted. First thing I do when I wake up, and last thing I do before I go to bed is check Facebook. I also annoyingly check my phone constantly when I'm out to dinner with my girlfriend and or family and friends. I've known a couple of people who every time they do something, they got to post it on Facebook so that the whole world can see what the fuck they're doing. (laughs) I've been out to my little sushi restaurant with my wife, Kristen. When I walk into a restaurant, I put my phone on silent, and when we sit down at the table, I turn it upside down so that I can't see it. If... There's a chance that my wife may go to the bathroom or if she has a call or something coming in because we're remodeling our house or whatever, and she picks up her phone, I'll check to see if I have any messages or I've missed any calls or whatever because I'm actually doing business. I'm not on my vacation out here at the Broken Skull Ranch. I can't stand when I see, there's a couple at our sushi restaurant. It happens all the time. Hell, I don't know why the motherfuckers go to dinner together because the whole time oh, yeah. he's typing on his iPhone or whatever gimmick phone and she's doing the same. And then the food comes and in between they eat. And if they got kids, the kids got iPads or whatever you call them and they're playing uh, video games. And so it's a total clusterfuck. A lot of people are hung up on that social media bullshit with Twitter. Man, I try to be I try to read all my mentions. I don't read all the other stuff. I try to be as diligent as I can about it. Out here at the ranch, I've really been trying to work on Instagram. But on uh, Twitter, I try to see what's going on. i gotta, I got to keep up with something right. that's going on in the world. Right. Uh, but it, 
man, dude, you just put that shit down, and, and you can't let it run. You can't let it rule or ruin your life. Uh, God damn, you ain't got to tell everybody what you do or post everything what you do or give a fuck what everybody else is, is doing. Some of these people tell you, I just want, I see how many texts or, or messages they've gotten. It's just like an ungodly number. I dig it. I'm into it. I use it. It's a tool, and I can stay in touch with my, with uh, people that I follow and people that follow me. But I, I, I do enough of it, that I, but I'm not addicted to it. Are you? No, no, not at all. I mean, I when I get up in the morning, I check and see, you know, what's going on now. During deer season when I'm out here, it's it's different than, you know, when I'm back in Rockport. I mean, here we're posting or I'm posting, you know, pictures of animals and sunset and, you know, snakes and shit like that to let everybody know, you know, what's going on out here and what we're dealing with. You know, but once I go back to Rockport, then it's just mainly, you know, after the work day. I mean, I don't I don't screw around with that shit i mean i may post a picture or two if i'm at a job site if something happens like when i you know ran that screw through my shoe and you know the shit about the hard hat but no i'm not i'm not addicted to it i'll check it at night you know i try to respond to people when they ask me questions you know legitimate questions about you know shit that goes on out here in construction but i'm not addicted to it but did you know you, that being said social media has changed the lives of a lot of people oh absolutely I mean, correct. motherfuckers just walking down la or in any town usa with their face glued to the phone they got to put something out there and get a response as to validation uh it, it's, it's, it's really strange i like social media but man and, and you want to stay on top of it because you you, you you're always you know spinning the next thing Man, I, I take it for what it is. It's, it's a tool, but dude, here's the thing: I don't, I don't it. get. <clears throat> and Kristen kind of halfway broke it down for me, but the selfies that people post, just you know, one after another, after another, after another, after another. I mean, you know, dude, I, I don't get that part. I mean, are you trying to get? Modeling gigs, if so, I would think you would be with an a agency of some sort or, you know, that relentless self-promotion is, dude, I'm, yeah, I don't get it. Hey, man, but uh, to me, a big, if I was on the single scene and all of a sudden, hey, man, I asked this girl to go out and maybe we, we got to eat and all of a sudden I'm sitting across from her table and she's on her damn phone the whole goddamn time, I'm a, yeah. What I'm thinking is, well, this is about the last time this shit's going to happen. Or, and, and vice versa. Yeah, I, well, I wouldn't be stupid enough to do this, but if I was to uh, yeah, take my wife out and I just sit there and I'm on the phone the whole fucking time, boy, I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to hear about it later. Or I'm disrespecting my wife <laughs> and it's just not polite and not proper etiquette. And so I don't do it. Dude, separate checks. You know, you go out with a girl for, you know, a dinner. Like me, you know, take a chick out, and she's fiddle-fucking around on her phone the whole time. You know, Jesus, I'm out. Fuck it. Get, I hope you're, hope you're, you know, contact an Uber, because I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right, before we go any further, I need to say thank you to the sponsors who make it possible for me to open up two cans of audio whoop-ass for you every single week for free. So thanks to Helix. Everyone on this great green earth is a unique individual. You don't walk like anyone else or talk like anyone else or even sleep like anyone else. So why is your mattress one size fits all? It doesn't have to be anymore. Thanks to Helix. Go to helixsleep.com, answer a few simple questions, and they'll use their proprietary algorithm to run a 3D biomechanical model of your body to create the most comfortable mattress you've ever slept on. Helix worked with the world's leading sleep scientists to develop this formula so that everyone can get an affordable, customized mattress and enjoy the best sleep of their lives. Helix even customizes each side of the mattress for all you couples out there. And here's the best part. You have 100 nights to try it out. And if you don't love your custom mattress, Helix will pick it up for free and give you a full refund, no questions asked. So go to helix.com slash podcast and get $50 off your order. That's helixsleep.com slash podcast. Helixsleep.com slash podcast. Hey, man, let's answer this question. Old Jesse's got a dilemma on his hands. Hey, Steve, love the podcast and followed your career to your last match. Shout out to Ted Fowler, too. I was wanting to take up hunting sometime in the near future. I already fish with my fiance every year, and she loves it. But she is not too sure about having firearms around the house. 
I've used firearms before in my late teens and early 20s, but never owned one myself. So with that said, my question is how to ease her mind and convince her that we can have firearms safely in the house and be responsible gun owners so I can go hunting with friends. Thanks, Jesse. Where does he live? Well, I didn't say where he lived. But goddamn, Jesse. I mean, shit, all you got to do is, you know, you know, learn how to uh, take a gun course, a, f- a firearm safety course or whatever, learn how to shoot, become proficient, teach your wife the same thing. Here, here's the thing. I got my wife uh, a Christmas present this year. I got her a three fifty seven Magnum, a wheel gun, and because she has uh, a 9 millimeter Glock semi-automatic, and I wanted to make, you know, ha- have some options for her. And so we go down to the gun range here at the Broken Skull Ranch. We have our own shooting range where we sight our guns in. So, you know, she can become familiar and more proficient and safe with this gun because, you know, automatic's one thing and, you know, the wheel gun is something different. Hey, man, it's all about being safe and becoming, uh, uh, you, my wife, her biggest thing is when she's talking about those guns, she knows, hey, man, or anybody that knows guns. Yeah. When yeah. you have something that explodes inside a cylinder and there's only one way for the bullet to exit, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so it comes out very quickly, uh, and I'm basically descri- describing in caveman style a gun, and that's what propels the bullet, and that's power, and that's a projected, uh, that's a projectile coming with force and speed, and if it hits you, something you know not very good is going to happen. You got to be really careful with that stuff. We don't fuck around with no guns out here at the Broken Skull Ranch. We're very safe. Uh, but hey, man, it's all about uh, you know getting comfortable with it. Go buy you a pellet gun first, and then move up to a, a twenty-two, and then or buy you a twist, buy you a twenty-two pistol. But go to a shooting range. Go to a gun range where you can rent some guns. You know, the thing I hate about gun ranges, Teddy. I don't trust anybody there. Or the, or the person next to you, yeah. Yeah, well, if he's having a bad day. Dude, that um, taking her to, the, to a gun range, I would do it with with your wife. It's his wife, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fiance. I, I, it's, fiance. Um, I, would, I would go down there as, as a team, boy and girl, and take a concealed weapons class. You know, that's the best hands-on approach to, you know, proper – handgun handling and dude that'll ease her mind you know don't let let her get active in it as well don't you take the class and then go back and go okay honey i'm safe you know i think you you would stand a better chance of her approval if you got her involved and and let her shoot some guns you know uh, you know i'm a big fan of handguns and i'm a big fan of seeing you know Kristen with a handgun and see her shooting more so she's more proficient with it yeah, absolutely. And I, like, like I told her, hey, man, if somebody comes in, every time I tell her, the gun is in a particular location, start pulling the trigger, send yep. a mass. Yep. Uh, but the more familiar you are with that gun, the better you feel with it, the more comfortable you are. Hey, enough about guns. Let's move on. This dude named Julian Wicks sent in a shit pile of questions. Let's see how many we can get through. All right. Hi, Steve and Ted. Let me start by wishing everyone all the best for 2017. I'm about to drop some 411 on you. Hell, the information you are about to get may even help Ted get some fluff. Here we go. <laughs> After the clusterfuck lesson about your American history, we need some local facts to put into your show. Local, for me at least. Here's 10 facts Australian style. One, we eat our national emblem, kangaroo and emu. The emu is a big old fucking bird. It's just like a kangaroo. It's just like an ostrich. Yeah, the kangaroo and the emu can't walk backwards. That's why they're on our coat of arms. Three. None of our native animals have hoofs. Four. The dingo fence is the longest fence in the world, three thousand four hundred eighty-eight miles long. I'd hate to patch that motherfucker. <laughs> Five. There's a stretch of railway track which is dead straight for 297 miles out to the Nullarbor Plain between Perth and Adelaide. Six, in 1979, debris from the NASA Skylab crashed down in a town in Western Australia. The town fined NASA $400 for littering. (laughs) You're killing me, Julian. You're fucking killing me. If I ain't won any awards yet, this is not helping me get there. But I'm going to keep going. 80% of the Australian population live within 40 miles from the coastline. Eight, a man named Bob Hawk set a world record by drinking 2.5 pints of beer in 11 seconds. 
He later became Prime Minister of our country. 9. Saudi Arabia imports camels from Australia. 10. The box jellyfish has killed more people in Australia than by stonefish, crocodile, and shark combined. Now, let's talk about the box jellyfish. That must be one deadly lethal motherfucker to have killed more people in Australia than the stonefish, the crocodile, and the shark combined. I don't know what a stonefish is. Have you ever heard of a stonefish? No, I have not. Is it a fish that is stoned? No, it sounds like a killer. Okay, 11. Our biggest cattle station is Anna Creek Station. It's 6 million acres, 9,400 square miles, invaluable. Tools to them are light plane and motorbike. Did how many acres? Six million acres. Six million. Boy, that'd be a big fucking lease, wouldn't it? <laughs> 9,400 square miles. <laughs> well, those are some interesting facts, Julian. Yeah, we're going to go take a lap. I'll see you next Thursday. Stacy, if those make the show, it's entirely on your shoulders. <laughs> I got one more. We got one more question for this illustrious podcast. All right. Hey, Steve, lifelong fan down here submitting a question. I listen to every episode. My question is I'm new to the hunting world and I'm down here in Slidell, Louisiana. We're big on duck hunting down here. I've never heard you or Ted talk about duck hunting. Are you and Ted into duck hunting? And if so, what's your favorite way to prepare a duck for dinner? Corey Johnson, Slidell, Louisiana. I know where Slidell is right outside of New Orleans. I don't hunt no ducks, but I got a, a duck recipe for you. I'll let Teddy go ahead and go ahead and answer this because he's the bird man. Well, you know what? I love to hunt ducks. Uh, having a lab, living down there on the coast, uh, you know, once once we close out our deer quota, then I can start, you know, working on birds. And we've got a boatload of ducks out here, a couple of them. You know, may may go the way of the dinosaur before it's all over. But I love to, you know, duck hunt down there on the coast with my buddies. And then, and the, I don't know about your duck recipe. Uh, we take olive oil, a little garlic, a little rosemary, you know, salt, pepper, stuff like that, and fillet the duck meat off of the off of the breast, and cut it almost like fajita style. You know what I mean? Real thin, and then just lightly pan sear it so it's it's you know super rare. And then, you know, that's that's the way we eat it with a boatload of potatoes. That sounds like it might be half-assed good, but my old buddy used to have a duck recipe. He used to always tell me, Steve, you get a duck, stuff it with shit, and cook it for about 45 minutes at 350 degrees, pull it out of the oven, take out the shit, and throw away the duck. <laughs> Ducks are not the best eating oh, animals in the world. I will be the first to tell you there's a lot of a lot of searching goes on before a duck hunt to find some willing recipients of you know said flying you know rats. Yeah, no, dude. If I you know I I lobby long and hard to find people that want the ducks because that's that is some of the worst shit you've ever eaten. Duck I went out with someone a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, might have been a year ago. I've been hitting him with so many steel chairs, I can't remember. But they said, it's, oh, man, the Peking duck here is wonderful. Oh, really? Well, go ahead and order that motherfucker, because I'm going to go get a cheeseburger. <laughs> you ain't fooling me with that shit. <laughs> well, a Peking duck is great here. It ain't been great in nowhere else I've ever been, so why would it be great here? Dude, I was on a hunt in uh, Thomasville, Georgia. And we we were down there deer hunting, and the the guy that was running the operation says, "Hey, you guys want to take a break and go on a duck hunt with us?" And I hadn't I hadn't hunted many ducks at all. We were hunting ringnecks or bluebills down there, and I said, "Yeah, man, I want to go. I want to go." And so they got us out in like these little canoes or pirros or whatever they had us in, and you know it was a real deal lodge, and you got to go with a guide. And I did I didn't know fuck all about duck hunting. I mean, I knew they were up in the sky, and that's where you you know aim the gun. <laughs> we pull into the into this little makeshift blind in this goddamn canoe. The guy is standing up in the front of it, and he starts going, brruh, brruh, brruh. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sitting in the back, my big ass. I'm looking at this going, fuck, where's the camera? I mean, this, uh, this is a rib, right? I mean, is this guy really doing this shit? Because I'm thinking, you know, like you see on TV, get you, you know, a call, quack, 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 do yeah. your shit. He's doing it by mouth, you know, brruh, brruh, brruh. and he's like, Dude, you gonna stand up and shoot? And I'm going, you know, fuck, as big as I am, standing up in this canoe with this guy. So I do stand up, and we shoot, you know, 
a, a bunch of ringnecks, not you know, not any more than our limit, obviously. And it, dude, it's a private pond. There's got to be seven or eight groups of hunters. So we all go back. They they take the ducks, you know, because it's a, it's a commercial setup. They take the ducks away, and they're going to feed us. So we walk in there, and I mean, this is Thomasville, Georgia, the South. You know, you got grits, scrambled eggs, and they got this stuff called duck pie, right? And you get yourself a good wad of mashed potatoes, and they spoon up this shit that looks like fucking gruel. I mean, it's like gray with string, you know, like horseshoe potatoes in it. (laughs) And that's a fucking duck pie. You know where they slap it down on your plate, and you kind of, you know, do that smoking band and wipe it off of your eye like, you know. Dude, you started eating that shit, and it literally grew in your mouth. I mean, it got bigger as you chewed on it. And and those guys were sawing through it like it was a last supper. And I'm going, God damn, this stuff is dog shit. You know? Yeah, so that was was my first try with ducks, and it's been downhill ever since. (laughs) Goddamn Thomasville, Georgia. Don't they make a lot of furniture out of there? Yeah, they have the longleaf pine. They, They also harvest all those pine trees for the telephone poles. God damn it. Yeah, man, I'm not a big fan of the duck. No, no. I like to watch them on the water. All of our ponds right now are so full. I mean, I heard the front lake over here, the duck pond, which is because all the ducks are over there. Right. But there's so much water out there. All the tanks are so full. Man, I like looking at them on the water, but I ain't got no, I got no interest in shooting none of them. I don't want to eat none of them. So I'm not going to fuck with them. I like to look at them on the wall. Hey, tell me, Teddy, uh, could you do that duck call one more time? <laughs> which one? The... <laughs> Or the wang, wang, wang. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> I, I'm trying to uh, look at the yellow piece of paper. My wife, oh no, she sent it to me on my iPhone. I was just getting ready to come over to Teddy's to cut this award winning podcast, which ain't going to win shit. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> All right, I was just fixing to get some current events for her, wrapped up this podcast. And as I had the pause button, Teddy said he had another great hunting story for me. <laughs> Whoa. What the fuck happened? All I got was a punchline. <laughs> a group of guys, local guides and uh, people that run the uh, sporting goods store there in Rockport. Every year they ramrod this big snow goose hunt in El Campo. You know, the El Campo, KD area where all the in rice El Campo, are. we drove right through the other day yeah. on our trip to UV country. It's off Highway 59. It's not too far from Edna, where I grew up, and Wharton County Junior College, where I went to school at. And so, you know, it's a, it's a guided hunt. Everybody pays, you know, pays their vig. We get up there in the dark of night, you know, El Campo's two hours from Rockport. And we're going to snow goose in this, you know, semi-flooded rice field. So they give you basically a white rain slicker, like lab coat. You put out hundreds of uh, garbage bag decoys, you know, just white trash bags on a stake. So we're running around doing all that stuff. Well, it starts to get light. You're laying down on your back in the, you know, half-ass mud. Um, and the a lot guy, of rice fields in El Campo. Yeah, yeah. Well, the guide says, you know, the, they'll start flying through here shortly. And we're, we're all in line, got our little horseshoe. So, you know, the, the geese are going to, you know, funnel right in there. It's going to be a killer. Start seeing these, these snow geese. And this goddamn guide, he doesn't have a mouth-blown call like a traditional, you know, honk, you know, goose call like that. How they do it? <laughs> That's that's the lesser Canadian. <laughs> this son of a bitch, he starts going, Alec, Alec, <laughs> Alec. And I'm looking at him like, what in the fuck? <laughs> Was he calling for Alec Trebek? <laughs> I was like, God damn, what a low-end operation. This motherfucker. And you can use an electronic call, you know, for snow geese. You can use, you know, like the predator call thing. You just hit the play button, and that motherfucker, you know, uh, uh, boats our quality. This fucking guy is over there. Alec, Alec, Alec. <laughs> So yeah. what what did the what did the geese do when he started yelling for Alec? <laughs> they're dumber than fuck because they're coming into a field full of garbage bags anyway. So I don't, <laughs> Alec, yeah. Alec, Alec, yeah. if, if if you used my tone of voice, would it have worked as, as good as the, the tone you used? I think the guy could have been saying Fred, Fred, Fred. <laughs> Fucking snows would have come in. Oh, dude, we shot a we shot a pickup truck bed full of those fucking snow geese, drove back to Rockport, 
And, man, we were almost going door to door trying to give those things away. That's one of those deals where, you know, perhaps we should have thought ahead of time that a snow goose is just a magnified duck. You know, that ain't the old ribeye of the sky going to be laying there in the field, and we're going to be snacking on this, you know, for days. No, dude, it's, it's geese are twice as bad as duck when it comes to culinary fair just let the motherfuckers migrate south that's all they're trying to do (laughs) but they're eating all the rice in the the process so you got to get alec out there (laughs) let me see if i can do that alec 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 i gotta work on my fucking snow geese call you can do that on the flight back that's my new year's resolution to work on my snow goose call Hey, uh, I thought I'm gonna have a shit pile of people send in questions uh, or New Year's resolutions. I, I, I didn't hammer the point hard enough on the uh, tweet I sent out. You got any New Year's? Re- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going snow goose hunting with those guys. <laughs> That's one you resolution. Got any, you got any New Year's resolutions? <sighs> I mean, I'm talking about no bullshit. Still, like, get back in shape. I'm talking about like, get more trim of and, uh, you know, stop drinking so much whiskey. Um, no, dude, neither. Uh, uh, you, no. Yes to the get more trim. No to the drinking less whiskey. No, dude, I'm, you know, I have no New Year's resolutions. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. So you don't have any goals for 2017? Make as much money as I can. Have as much fun as I can. Get laid as much as I can. Fish as much as I can, golf, you know, just bullshit like that, you know, just, dude, no, just stay out of trouble and have fun. Ain't getting no younger. Fuck, if I haven't done it by now, you know, what? Dude, it's like that old George Strait song a couple of years ago. I ain't here for a long time. I'm here, I'm here for, for a good, good time. time. That's, that's, yeah, everything that motto, I. But everything in moderation. Everything that I have wanted to do, fuck it, I'm going for now, I haven't wanted to jump out of a plane, do any parachuting, none of that bullshit. Uh, I want to travel to hunt more. I want to do, I, I'd like to get drawn in Nevada. If people in, you know, the, the state of Nevada would allow me a fucking tag, I could go there and hunt. Um, no, nah, dude, I just, want to, I just want to play more and have fun. Tell me about jumping out of a perfectly fine airplane with a trash bag on your back, a parachute. No, dude, I don't so want to do A lot, that lot of people go out there and do that, or they'll do the tandem jump with the instructor or whatever. That doesn't interest me any at all. You know what? I, I mean, everybody's uh, adrenaline junkies. It, yeah. By you know, in some some context, uh, that doesn't appeal to me. You know, well, I mean, I like one to, goddamn bit. You know, I like hurling to, forward nah, towards the earth, no, gravity, no, no. pulling your ass down. Hey, motherfucker, get down here! Yeah. No, I like to I like to drive fast. You know, that's that's my deal. You know, like on on your four wheeler. Yeah. You know, during summertime, kick that thing in the ass and go ripping down the Mason Dixon. Hope to Christ, the deer or a hog doesn't come running but out. But you got to watch that Mason Dixon because I think he's got a couple of damn, uh, you know, the, the ruts in the road there. Yeah. Whether if you could be in a mule and just kind of hit that thing and mm-hmm. just kind of, you, know, no. you know, wish you around. So you got to be careful with no. that goddamn four wheeler. No, dude, but I mean, jumping out of a plane for the adrenaline rush, I see no, nothing good coming out of that. You know, but I like, I like to go fast, whether it's, you know, on a boat or on dry land. Are you going to lower your prices 2017 for no, no. construction? No. Jesus Christ. I'd like to retire sometime. I don't want to be doing this bullshit when I'm 80 years old. Show up, you know, I'm here to change out your front door. You don't mind if I take a nap here in about 30 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> and I've had four cups of coffee, so I'm going to need to, you know, use your bathroom, too. If you are still doing this at 80, I mean, that you might need to resort to... Uppers, amphetamines. <laughs> it's the only time I'd ever recommend them. You got to pay the bills, but you're too tired. No, I just straight up. I'm fucking with you. God damn it! It's the last podcast coming from the Broken Skull Ranch. I'm about ready to go uh, over to my side of the crib and uh, hit the hay. It's going to be a long day tomorrow. I'm heading into Beeville to pick up my deer meat from my nephew Neil. Teddy, any parting words from the first Unleashed show of 2017? No, man, I'm I'm not far behind you. I'm going to, well, I still got to cook dinner. You know, cook dinner. Let's go I'm, cook. I'll probably thaw out some of those fish, cook some of those trout. I got dog food. I ain't got to feed my dogs fish. So they're eating dog food. I'm eating the fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, dude, but just, you know, hit the rack early. I got a big day tomorrow filling feeders and, you know, take down the pop-up blinds and the steaks and, you know, start 
cleaning stuff up? Oh, uh, when I get back, uh, I'll tell you when I get off the podcast. All right, everybody, give me the go-home cue. It's time to wrap up this podcast and ride off into the sunset. But before I do, let me give you a little heads up. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Steve Austin has a bunch of new T-shirts, all the ones I wore on the new season of Broken Skull Challenge. And the new season is coming to a conclusion. Still got a couple of badass episodes on CMT. Sunday night, 10, 9 central. Do not miss the final two episodes. And also, My Damn Beer, an IPA, Broken Skull IPA, from El Segundo Brewing Company, is available in Whole Foods and Total Wines in California. And if you don't live here in California, check inside the seller.com and see if they ship to your state. Hey, I appreciate you guys supporting the sponsors of the Steve Austin Podcast. They're the ones who let me do this for you free twice a week. So big thanks to Nature Box. Get 50% off your first order at naturebox.com slash Austin. To DDP Yoga, go to ddpyoga.com slash Austin to get 25% off all DDPY DVDs and related merch. To Helix, go to helix.com slash podcast to get $50 off your first mattress order. To Nature Box, go to naturebox.com slash Austin for 50% off your first order. To Loot Crate, order your WWE Slam Crate at lootcrate.com slash unleashed and use the promo code unleashed to save $3. And, of course, to Amazon, who has been supporting this podcast since day one. And Amazon is the best place to get the cold steel broken skull knife. Just 75 bucks from the most badass pocket knife on the planet. And if you order the cold steel broken skull knife through my Amazon links, Amazon will kick back a couple of bucks to the podcast. Never costs you anything extra. No hidden fees. No charges. Buy whatever you plan on buying and help out the podcast in the process. And you can find my Amazon links by going to podcastone.com, clicking on the Killer Deals button in the top right corner of the page, and then hitting the Steve Austin Show button. I got Amazon links for USA, UK, and Canada. And if you bookmark it, you can get there in one click. Hey, folks, keep listening. The 60-second AP News headlines are coming up next. Until then, my name is Steve motherfucking Austin. And I will catch your ass down the road. Download new episodes of Steve Austin Unleashed every Thursday at PodcastOne.com. That's PodcastONE.com. Stay tuned for the latest AP News headlines from Podcast One right after this. The Angry President. I'm Rita Foley with an AP News Minute. We've learned that President Trump was seething when he fired FBI Director James Comey. He felt Comey let the FBI's Russia investigation play out in the press, we're told. Former Trump campaign advisor Roger Stone tells the Today Show this morning the Trump presidential campaign did not collude with Moscow. The idea of Russian collusion is a canard. It's a falsehood. Earlier on the Today Show, White House Deputy Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders was asked about a line in the president's termination letter to Comey that read, I greatly appreciate you informing me on three separate occasions that I am not under investigation. Some have called that statement into question. Sanders was asked about it. Uh, look, I, I'm not sure on the, the reasoning behind that exact part being in there, but I do know uh, I spoke to the president directly, and he said that those uh, moments and conversations did take place. I'm Rita Foley.